It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Hey, it's episode three. I'm out here at Impact, but today I have special guests because up from Texas, we got a couple of guys that building an office down there in the Texas marketplace for Impact, and we're having this big open house here for the security center. And it's so fantastic to be able to talk to a couple of guys building a business in a whole other state with impact as impact grows across the country. So here with me today, I got Casey and Scott. How are you guys doing? Doing and great, right? Isn't this a phenomenal place? Seriously. Gorgeous, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know, we've all been in the industry a long time and a lot of us, our roots are in the toner and all that crazy nonsense. Oh, yeah. But when you when you come to a place like this and you look at this, isn't it just like, what the hell? No, then that's the impact way. If you're gonna do it, do it right. It makes an impact. That's right. You know, it's not just a name. That's right. And, you know, and I, I'm looking at this thing and I, I just, it really overwhelms me but it has to be really cool for your marketplace because you know here's the reality you know corporations can't have a home office in all their satellite offices <laughs> and so the ability for that team to understand what's behind you here in Chicago has to be pretty powerful in, from a recruiting standpoint or anything else. But, Agree. But you know tell us a little bit about the Texas market how long have you all been there and, and let's talk about that a little bit. So we uh, started Impact Texas about 18 months ago um started growing very very quickly right out of the box you know scott and i both worked in the the houston marketplace and all throughout texas uh it, so you know it wasn't as if we we were starting fresh mm -hmm. um that said a couple of challenges that uh that raised their ugly head right off the bat that we powered through mm -hmm. uh with the support of impact Specifically, Frank Kuko, Dan Meyer uh, mm -hmm. as great partners. Uh, they've been nothing short of incredible. Uh, without impact behind us, uh, allowing Scott and I to do what Scott and I do, uh, we we are well on our way of taking over that marketplace. Well, you know, I compare it to. I'm just thinking of a smaller dealer, maybe in your marketplace. Yeah, from from the old channel, you know, sure. the folks, and they're. You know they're they're trying to get into IT and they don't have a clue what they're talking about. Yeah. They don't have a clue what they're getting into. And we talked about that in the last couple episodes. But you know when you when you're bringing in sales reps into the organization now, what's that look like compared to when you were bringing them in to sell print? Oh man, oh, what a difference! First of all, the level of talent that we don't need to recruit. They're recruiting us. They're mm -hmm. so excited to be a part of what this is mm -hmm. uh, all across the country. And, and you know, the Texas marketplace specifically had a need. Uh, there was a desire for someone like Impact to hit that marketplace. There was a need that we're filling. Um, it, it's lining up out the streets and, and we couldn't be ex more excited about what's happening. It's gonna be a fun next few years. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, human capital has been a, really a pain in the ass for all industries yeah, to hire people. Sure. Yeah. I mean, especially when you're starting to move upstream. <laughs> I mean, yep. I, you know, I, I hate to say this, but in all reality, a lot of the legacy print folks, yeah. you know, they're there because of a certain age or they don't really want to leave and start something over and do all that or they don't have the support mechanism behind them. And, you know, what I've learned, which was an eye opener for me, is because of the deep, the discipline that, that Impact has, it's easy to train these folks and transition some of them. But at the same time, you can bring in some really nice fresh blood and that's got to be exciting. You know? Yeah, that's a luxury that, that neither Scott or I have ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, the the staff, the, the organization that uh, Ashley Carnes and Kendra Bittner have built mm -hmm. out with IOI, uh, we have total complete confidence that when we hand over a rep, uh, that what we're going to get back is exactly what we need in order to be able to, to continue doing what we do. Um, it is unique where we, we've taken multi-million dollar hardware reps mm -hmm. and tried to plug them into our model it just does not translate always well what you said is is important and you know words matter but you can't plug in it yeah. in print that's right? true and we're you know I, I love these people you know let's throw it on the back of our name and call us an it company right let's go on our website and talk about how our printers are cyber secure proof i mean a lot of nuttiness in the space sure and i think in, in any marketplace that you guys go in you're gonna you're gonna there's gonna be a realization that if someone is in the print space and they're thinking well it's transitioning i want to go where the people are actually knowing how to transition i think you're going to have a, a a good run there because you know yeah. there's a lot of the younger reps in the markets that are that are looking for a challenge looking for something different but. well ray you talk a lot about this uh, the ability to execute against the promises made mm -hmm. that's something our teams have never had before the ability to go to that next level the investments that frank and impact have made 
to be able to keep a promise and go to the next level, that's the difference. Well, and that takes discipline, that takes patience. You can't just, you know, turn a switch and, you know, you guys have been there 18 months. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think you're getting phone calls. Where's our big IT deal? You know, <laughs> you're probably getting them now, 18 months, you should be selling some stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but at the end of the day, I mean, you, when you build a, an infrastructure, it's all about an infrastructure, but let's talk about the culture. So impact up here in the Chicago land forever, and you know, they're spreading across the country. How do you keep it all together? I mean, do you bring people up here? Because you, it seems to me if you brought, a, and I know they just had a big meeting, I guess, over at the pier where they brought a whole company, all salespeople. Yeah. But you know, how do you how do you how do you instill what they have here in the place in Houston? Because Houston's not here. You don't have a sock center and all that kind of stuff. Probably got a nice office. But at the end of the day, how do you how do you how do those reps feel about that? So, so I'm actually going to give Scott a lot of credit to seek. Uh, for him seeking out the right relationship for for he and I, mm -hmm. um, and, and 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 we met with a lot of people that you know not naming names here, but we met with a lot of people before deciding that Impact was the right partner for us. It was really easy because we we have that heavy emphasis on culture mm -hmm. and and accountability and hard work. Uh, and play hard uh, are things that that we believe in. You walk into our office in Houston, which by the way. We need to send you a plane ticket so you can come down and 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 have some popcorn and ping pong with us. But That'd be awesome. Yeah, uh, we have some of the hardest working individuals in sales that work directly for Impact, and it's no different in Texas. Well, you know, I'll tell you this, and you know, I was I wrote an article I don't know three or four years ago about culture, and you know, the premise of the article was that we've taken culture and we hijacked its good intentions because we made it about us, not our customers. Right. Yep. And the one thing that I noticed the first time I came here, and you know, Frank brought me here a few months ago and I was able to talk to all the leaders here, but you know, the discipline is number one, but more importantly, there is accountability. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can have the best culture and it's not just the fun stuff. Right. The culture is about the end user and how are you held accountable to the end user? And then how do you feel as a person working for this company that the back end is gonna support the customer that you just sold? And I, you guys hit a home run with that. And there's not a lot of companies that can do that. And, yeah. you know, I, I don't know, you know, what, what the difference is and how it works here and it doesn't work other people. Because a lot of people talk about culture, but I, I don't think they understand what it means. Right. Culture without accountability, I, I think, is stupidity, number one. And it, it needs to be about the end users. Well, Ray, one of the things, so people ask us all the time about the difference between Texas culture and the Midwest and California. And of course there's differences, mm -hmm. but there are also a lot of parallels. For example, People want to come to a place to work where they know they've got a future, a career path that they're invested in, that they have all the tools necessary mm -hmm. to succeed. Clients want to do business with people that they can trust, that they know they're going to get what they contracted or agreed for. Uh, people in general, whether you live up north or you live in Texas, they're looking for honesty and hard work and discipline and accountability. And those are the things that translate really well. I don't care what market you're in. Well, I mean, if you're a true professional, you know whether you're whether you're the CEO or whether you're a sales rep in the marketplace. If you're a true professional, you 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 appreciate accountability because right. without accountability, you're thinking to yourself, they don't even care. Yep. And if they if if a rep thinks they don't even care, yeah. Then they also think they don't even care about the customer, and so that holds them back from especially when you get into IT services. Sure. You know, I, you guys will know this. I mean, remember the reps were afraid to go sell maybe a segment four because they grew up on segment one and two. We're trying to get them to move upstream in the copy world. And they're like, ah, I don't know if we're going to be able to fix that machine. Yep. I don't know. If, I just don't. I'm not comfortable with it. You had to get them comfortable with it. Absolutely. And it's it's no different in IT. It's it's actually worse because there's so many moving pieces and parts. That, but if the reps feel comfortable in that. Well, let me ask you this. Does your office eat all the dog food? that impact makes <clears throat> not only do we eat it but we also make our own dog food so <laughs> uh yeah it, it in and they quickly are learning that, that it's just different mm -hmm. um when when jeff ford comes into town and talks about a 2.9 hour response time for copiers uh you know that's that's a big deal uh where most copier dealers well, let's just use the houston marketplace for instance they're struggling to even get to four mm -hmm. uh, what, what we're hearing from the phone calls that we get from end users out there is that it sometimes you'll place a service call and nobody shows up. Uh, you know that's that 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 copier dealer trying to pretend to be an IT company. Mm -hmm. 
that you've talked about before. Uh, try even proposing a four hour response time whenever you have a server go down. Yeah, yeah. Um, I promise we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's not just what you put on paper, it, it's, it's the tangible. You well, know, it's more importantly, you know what? If they don't show up on a copier for 10 hours, the world's not going to end. Yep, that's right. Okay, they might cancel the contract, move with another provider. Yeah. They don't show up five seconds after something happens and their whole infrastructure is threatened. Exactly. Somebody just fished them and they're taking the money out of the bank and all the, you know, all the crap that goes with that or ransomware. I mean, yeah, that's so, there is a big difference. Yes, sir. And that goes back to the discipline. Yeah. Well, you know what? I can't wait to come down there in Texas and spend some time with you. Maybe I'll go out in the field and sell some stuff bring it you know I'd we'd love, love to, to do, do it, it. Yeah. yeah you know you guys it's great i'm looking forward to this uh, wing ding we're going to have tomorrow here at the dot sock center folks i got it i i just can't help it this place is phenomenal isn't it because everybody watching me knows this status quo is the killer if all it'll be invented don't get stuck in status quo and i'll see y'all later